Wow. <laughs> I know, I know it's quite controversial. <laughs> G'day, welcome to Chef's Favourite. I'm James Grass. Today, we're on commercial drive in Vancouver to meet with our friends at Bar Corso. Chef Luke Boswell runs a sneaky good food program and of course their cocktails are unbelievable. Come with me, we're gonna go meet the chef. Luke Boswell, thanks for joining us, man. No worries, thanks for coming. Bar Corso, on Commercial Drive in Vancouver. Yeah. One of the coolest bars on the drive, if not in Vancouver. Tell Thank us a little you. bit about it and what your role is here. I'm a man with many hats, I must say that. I okay. kind of do a little bit of everything, but head chef, exec chef, whatever you want to call it, is the main role. Uh, menu development, more organized in the kitchen. Bar Corso is a little kind of sexy, dark, moody, small plates tasting lounge, I suppose. We have a mixture of Italian-inspired cocktails and Italian-inspired food. The reason I say Italian-inspired is because not a lot of classics go on the menu, especially with the setup. It creates a lot of constraint, but constraint creates creative solutions. Certainly. Um, end up getting a bit creative with the way I execute dishes, uh, which is a lot of fun. Credible wine list, credible cocktail list, crappers and amaros out the wazoo. Yeah, something. we like that. Yeah. I got to try a couple of the cocktails the other day. I tried an amazing bourbon sour, New York nice. sour, which is one of my favorites. And then uh, I also tried what was one of your favorites, the Vucare recently. Yeah. Why the Vucare? I don't know, it's kind of, I like very booze forward drinks. Uh, I think, you know, like Boulevardiers, Old Fashions, they've kind of drinks definitely the rope I normally go down. And it was Danny actually, our bar manager, that said, you'll love this. And then I tried it and it was just It's It was fantastic when I tried it as well. Yeah. Well, thrilled to be here. The essence of Chef's Favorite is asking the chef, Chef, what is your favorite dish? On the menu, it's kind of hard to pick favorites, but definitely one of the only thing that doesn't change in our menu, because it rotates so much, is the Wagyu Tartar. It's the thing that kind of brings people's back. I'm not allowed to change it. Um, <laughs> Why aren't you allowed to change it? Because I've been threatened with death, if yeah, I do. So, because it's so popular? Yeah, I mean, like, because <laughs> I rotate the menu so much, so I think people want at least one consistency, and I kind of got to the height of how this is and how it's presented, and I don't think I can improve on it, so instead of changing it and trying to improve on it, I just kind of settled with my brain. I was like, okay, people can have that one thing. Don't fuck with perfection, huh? Basically. I love that. All right, well, let's get stuck in. Yeah, so I'm gonna get you to do this. Okay. Uh, we'll start with a Wagyu. You can whack all of that Wagyu in there. So it's just a uh, diced up Wagyu. What you do now, I'm just gonna get the... Uh, crostini. Crostinis on the go? Yeah, just sort of nice and toss it in, toss it off. Good. Yum. You might as well use that so you can mix. A little teaspoon of uh, Dijon mustard. Get it started about that? About half of that, really. That's it, perfect. Okay. Uh, then we're gonna go pickled mustard seeds. Gonna probably go like triple the amount you put of mustard in. Kind of creates freshness for the dish. And about that? Yeah, that seems about right. Um, now we're gonna go the chives and parsley. There is one more thing that I did forget, and that is shallots. Shallots? I'll do this part. There you go. Yeah, look at that. Boom. Woo! Now we're gonna go some flaky molten salt, a decent amount. Like one shy. pinch, two pinches? Like a decent amount. <laughs> is that a decent amount though? I'm gonna do it. Yeah, oh, damn. Molten salt isn't like, you know, using kosher salt. It's not super, super, super like salty, which is a weird thing to say. Now just a good pinch of pepper, black pepper. That's about right. That's about right. Then we've got the coal oil. This? Yeah. So coal it's, oil, what is that? So just kind of superheat up some coal uh, until they're red hot and then drop them in oil and run away before it explodes. And then it smokes the oil. The levels of this dish is trying to give the like impression that it's been grilled without having a grill. So there's the smoke oil, you got some onion ash that goes on top and then a smoke by marrow emulsion. Yum. So it's like three different levels of it. So You're a bit of a madman, eh? A little bit. Creative solutions. More? Lots more. Lots more? Yeah. Where did you learn this concept of smoking oil and charcoal and throwing that in there? Atlas Dining are definitely in Australia, kind of one of the places where I learned a lot about fire cooking, especially in like a restaurant 
mm. setting. But they had a massive fire oven, beautiful charcoal grills, a hearth. You know, we chopped wood every day, made our own coal. You had to chop wood for the fire as well? Yeah, so that was my exercise in Still Australia. Still got all your fingers and toes? <laughs> kind of. I mean, I did almost lose a foot. Um, that was okay. <laughs> Survived that one? Survived that one. They rotate their cuisine every four months. Yeah. So obviously there's a lot of cuisines that don't necessarily use a lot of fire cooking sometimes, but using things like smoke oil, you can incorporate aspects of that flavor into the dish without really having to allow it to touch coals. Yum. And in our tiny little kitchen, I can't have a fire grill, but I enjoy the flavor. So. Sure, I noticed you don't even have a gas grill in here. No, just the induction burners, an oven, and then a sous vide, I suppose. Sick. We try not to rely too heavily on the sous vide. You guys really create some magic in this tiny little spot, huh? Most definitely. Yeah. I think that's kind of one of the catches of bar also, I think, you know what I mean? Like people will pass and they go, we had that from there. And it's like just two, three of us in here kind of. Pumping out amazing dishes. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so I've got the smoked oil in there. So what you're gonna mix the shit out of it. Mix the shit out of it, okay. Like you really wanna like massage all them flavors into it. Okay, okay. So while I'm massaging this. Yes. Can you tell us what your favorite French restaurant is in the city? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Le Faux Bourgeois. Le Faux Bourgeois? Yeah. Yeah, that's an epic little spot. Yeah. I'm just gonna oh, add up. a little bit more of this to there. Yeah. The greens in. What's your favorite ingredient to work with? Uh, my favorite ingredient, I mean, I love mushrooms. I think uh, there's like a lot of versatility in mushrooms. Mushrooms? Indeed. Yeah, okay. mushrooms. All mushrooms are great. All mushrooms. They all have different purposes and flavors, and they're so, like, I don't know, so vast in flavor. I, I mean, if I could pick one ingredient, that would definitely be it. Mushroom. Yeah, not a specific mushroom. I'm just gonna give this a taste and make sure it's all good. It looks good. Oh, come on, grass. Pretty tasty. Is that working? Yeah. Sick. Oh, more salt, he says. More salt, more smoke. Yeah, place like this where you have small plates, I feel like the flavors kind of need to slap you in the face a little bit. Mm. Not necessarily being salty, but using the salt to enhance everything that's there. Yeah, right. And using something like Malden salt, it's, I mean, a bit biased because I'm not far away from Malden where I grew up. Where did you grow up? Essex, Hertfordshire, Cambridge ways. Okay. Um, I mean, they're all very different areas, but that's kind of where I circulated. Definitely more of a country boy. A lot of game, which kind of makes me think of home. Yeah, um, nice. But obviously England is a tiny island, so the coast is nowhere, not that far away. Mm. And Malden salt is probably 20 minutes away from where I grew up. Good oysters, good salt. Good fish in general, good fish and chips. Good fish and chips. Yeah. Yup. And like, you know, some places. Like where? I don't know. <laughs> so Luke, you spent some time in Australia as well as uh, through France and Europe. Like you're quite a well-traveled chef, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I try to be. Uh, I don't like staying in one place for a very long time. I mean, Vancouver is currently like the longest I've ever spent anywhere, to be fair. Like, mm. When did you move to Vancouver? January 2020. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I am very grateful about um, coming here and being in Canada. At that time, it was I felt very supported. Mm. And being in Vancouver as well, with all the nature around, during a time where, for the first time in ever, I've had like time off without having any purpose or not being able to do anything. So right. getting to explore and ride my bike and hike and stuff that Sometimes when you work a full schedule and you do like up to 80 hours a week, the last thing you want to do on your day off is go for a fucking hike, you know what I mean? Sure. As much as I love it, like it's... Sometimes you just want to stop, go to the beach? Yeah. Did you find a favorite you... neighborhood? East Van. Around? East Van's it, huh? Yeah, because I wasn't actually living in East Van when I moved here. I was living down in Gastown. Um, I was working here part-time, um, but I only ever got to see snippets of it. And then during the pandemic, it, like I moved over this way and kind of just got to love the community. and. You know, everyone kind of knows everybody. Everyone kind of is really friendly and lovely with everybody, especially all the restaurants here as well. We're like, you know, no one's trying to steal business from everyone. We're all trying to support each other. Building. We're all about trying to make the drive more diverse, more fun for people to come here and like give people a reason to come out this way. Yeah. And the more different reasons we have, the better it is for everybody. Totally. Do you have a few favorites that are on the drive that you uh, love to hang out at when you're not at work? Oh, most definitely. I mean, to be fair, like I couldn't even pick one that was more of a favorite. That's the beauty of it. Everything is different, you know, like if you want oysters and smash back some shots of JMO, you go to Harbour and, you know, if you want a good bar me, you go Merci Boku. If yeah. you want to have a couple of pints and a burger, you go Charlatan. Want some live music, you go Osita. If you want to get crazy and smash some plates, you got Lula's, you know, and like you got Havana as well down the road, right. more fun and uplifting, like cocktails and drinks. So like, like I said, it's Something a lot. Something for everybody. I, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people I've missed that I love, but 
Yeah, it's just like a little bit of everything. Yeah. Well, so, DL Chicken's over here, Lunch Lady. Yeah, Lunch Lady as well, of course. Unbelievable, yeah. right? Lunch Lady's lovely as well. Do you have a favorite cafe for your, you know, your espressos? I mean, I'm biased because here we have really good coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and I like making my own coffee as well. Um, just because, you know, you know how you want it and you trying to explain that to someone, I suppose it's not the same as going to Starbucks and asking for like a triple pump of this, blah, blah, blah. Sure. But, you know, the way I want it is the way I want it. Uh, but I definitely enjoy Turks as one of my favorite coffee Turks, spots. okay. Just had Turks this morning. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned to me earlier that you were in both Australia and in New Zealand. Yes. I gotta know, who has better coffee, Australia or New Zealand? Uh, Kiwi. Wow! <laughs> wow! I know, I know it's quite controversial. <sighs> That's controversial, all right. We'll let that one go. I know, I'm sorry about that. How long did you spend in Australia? Uh, almost two years. And, and New Zealand? Two, over two years. Wow. Yeah. So you really got amongst it down there, hey? Yeah, I've done a lot of traveling around New Zealand. I had a really pretty, pretty cushy job when I got there. I was uh, like a mercenary chef, is what they called me. Okay. It was all for senior positions and like fine dining and like banquet events. Yeah. So basically I felt like a VIP, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll pay for me to get to taxis, flights, everything. Just you drop know, you in. Just drop me in and like a lot of the times, especially in New Zealand, most of the flights that leave quite regularly, there's like small tiny little planes and no one on them. So I'm just like walking out like a rock star and then getting picked up <laughs> at the airport. And as you know- Somebody standing there with a little sign. Yeah. Mr. Boswell. Basically. Yeah. And I'm just like this little sprite 20 year old. Wow, like, oh, yeah. How good's New Zealand? Yeah, great. So yeah, I got to see a lot of it and I spent a lot of time in like the bush as well. Yeah. And, kind of discovered a lot about myself in New Zealand, I suppose. Sure. Grew my hair long, got some dreads. Did you? You went full dreads, did you? I went, I went full dreads, and then I shaved them off in Australia. <laughs> All right, Chef. I'm going to get out of your hair. We've had a bit of fun. I'll leave you to it. Thank Easy. you. No worries. Wow. That Wagyu tartar crostini looks freaking amazing. Um, I can smell that smoky charcoal oil already from here. Knife and fork, hands. Fucking hands. Let's go. I'm gonna go for it, so I'm pretty hungry. Oh yeah. Mmm. The crunch right out of the gate. Big smoky flavors, the pickle, mm. the molden right in there too. And those mustard seeds, wow. Absolutely delicious. You guys really have perfected that, haven't you? Yeah, I don't think I can improve it too fair. No, nor should you, because that seems like it should be the staple on the menu, hey? Unreal. Let me ask you about some more of your favorites. Yeah. You got a favorite Vietnamese restaurant in Vancouver? I do. Um, up on Victoria and some other street. Phun uh, Cha Khao. Hoyang Yen. Okay. It used to be a hole in the wall, but obviously they were very popular and now they have a bigger restaurant. Um, so yeah, like the, I mean, Pachuca Hoyang is basically noodle soup. It's kind of somewhere along them is lines. Is it pho? Yeah, so mm. it's pho, but it's like a fish pho. Okay, oh so, wow. So they have a, the Bun Ryu, I don't want to bastardize the uh, pronunciation, but it's crab pho. Okay. And I fucking love crab. You love crab, huh? Yeah. And it's just like one perfect hangover food. Like fresh broth. I mean, when I was in Vietnam, I never felt healthier because of the food kind of thing. It was definitely one of my like favorite cuisines to eat. But yeah, the, the crab pho is just... Okay. Sounds like I know where I'm going this evening. Oh, it's Sounds delicious. amazing. It's really good. Now you mentioned that it used to be a bit of a hole in the wall. Yeah. Do you have any other hole in the wall favorites around the city? Yeah, so King's Way is a place called Jojak. It's like Northern Chinese uh, cuisine, like yeah. specifically Xi'an cuisine. Okay. Uh, closely kind of related to like Sichuan, I suppose. Okay. In terms of the use of it, but not as spicy or like their Sichuan pepper is not as numbing or, or used as heavily, I suppose. Not that I'm an expert on mm -hmm. Northern Chinese cuisine, but... Um, <laughs> Few are. It, it's just incredible. They do like the hand pulled Biang Biang noodles. Um, they do it to order. They even got like a pork burger there that they do with their own dough. A pork burger. Yeah, like a braised pork burger. Yum. But they, I don't even eat. I don't eat a lot of chicken in general. I just think it's one of the meats that is just not very good, in my opinion. Mm. Not in the sense of nutrition or like 
it's just kind of boring. There's right? more more interesting things out there. Most definitely, sure. definitely not the thing I lean towards for cooking or even a restaurant at home. Mm. But they have this like lightly poached chicken breast with this like Szechuan chili oil, and it's to die for. Wow. And again, I could probably also imagine that on some hot rice being a really good hang of fuel. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and it's just like, as far as I know, it's uh, the lady out the front and the man in the back, and that's it. It's just mm. like 10, 20, 10, 15 seats. Oh, uh, it's tiny, tiny, eh? Yeah, and it's like honestly one of the best dining experiences I've had in Joe Jack. Yeah. Sick. I've never heard of that. I'm very excited. It's so good. Sick. Patios. Yeah. Vancouver's got lots of them. Yeah. Thoughts? Best one or favorite one in the city? Um, definitely one of my favorites, apart from Bar Course, obviously, is uh, I think, you know, uh, Havana down the road, they obviously do a good down job. Down the street. Yeah, they've always kind of got a full patio and mm -hmm. they're obviously doing something right. Yeah, it's good fun there. Yeah, I've had some incredibly boozy afternoon sessions. Let's have another little bite yeah. of this. <laughs> Let's not forget about these. Mm. What cut of beef is that? It's Wagyu, but is it like the tenderloin? I have round. I have round. Do you have a favorite supplier that you work with here in Vancouver? Um, yeah, I mean, Two Rivers, obviously. I mean, we were brewing the beast yesterday, um, and they're the, they're the main supplier for that. I mean, their product quality is very high, and mm -hmm. a lot of, like, really unique ingredients, too. Oh, really? Like, things that you can't really regularly get everywhere. I mean, I'm sure other places have it, but I definitely have a passion for game meats, quail, pigeon, pheasant. I mean, duck is not considered too much of a game meat, but definitely yeah. duck. And they they are, seem to be an expert in that field of like wild meats. Wow. So you mentioned that like game meats, and, and you mentioned earlier that it ties back to sort of your childhood growing up. Yeah. Is there a dish that reminds you of your childhood? Or is it like a comfort food or a favorite thing that if you're feeling nostalgic that you'll cook? There's definitely a few things I always think about. I don't think I'd ever be able to recreate anything my great-grandmother did the way she did it, but you could always tell like when my great grandmother was like in a good mood and wanted to end a night well, she'd do like liver bacon and onions with like mashed potato. Like, oh, and yeah. it's such a simple thing, but like perfectly cooked liver with all them. It's kind of really comforting. I grew up with such a variety of different foods. Like my great grandmother was a crazy cook and she used a lot of game meats as well, yeah. like a lot of rabbits and mm -hmm. pigeon. And I mean, she was, she was sort of your first hospitality or cooking mentor, I suppose, eh? You know, definitely. She taught me how to make bread. She taught me how to make like a lot of different type pastries and pastries and cooked a lot of Indian food. I mean, it's- Oh, food. really? Yeah, it's, I ate a lot of that. She loved spicy food. She also liked to experiment on me because I just, was a kid, I just would put anything in my face, like just eat absolutely <laughs> anything. So I think at one point she kind of saw it as a challenge and started cooking some pretty fucked up shit. Let's see if I'd eat it. See? See how far we can take this kid, hey? Yeah, no, 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 evidently I ate everything. So I had one use around the house and that was kind of helping her cook, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's what she done most of the day, wow. just cook, 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 cook. So I just helped. Yeah, and that's what sparked it all for you, huh? I think that's definitely where I found like the satisfaction in it. I think my passion for eating kind of kind of got me there as well. But also like the instant gratification with experimentation is definitely something that I really appreciate. Like, you know, for the Wagyu Tartar, you know, I can try something and I can almost instantly find out whether it works or not. Mm. And it's not like a lot of professions where you can be so creative and experimental and have results instantaneously. Wow. I really appreciate that. Mm. So. Well, it's a heck of a good crustini. Well, I think that's about everything for us. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to shoot uh, another episode of Chef's Favorite. No worries. Um, we'll look forward to going and trying some of those great places that you've mentioned, and uh, we'll be calling you to do some of these dinners coming up uh, later this year. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks awesome. so much. Appreciate you. I appreciate you.